you guys, CP Modi here, back with another video. Now, when we think about future of computing, we usually think about our phones being the most powerful things on the planet, and they can drive 20,000 4K monitors, and they can do what our supercomputers can do today, but in the palm of your hand, and obviously without obviously burning you, but also too without running out of power. However, I personally disagree with that future, and we will show you today what the future of computing might be in, well, not too distant futures. Now today we're talking about virtualization of computers. Now I recently started studying at a new university in Melbourne and they offered a service which was basically streaming a desktop computer to the home user. Every student that goes there gets access to this and I sort of thought cool you know you can have access to your school documents whoop de doo it's going to be a terrible service that flat out won't work. Now because I study IT networking, I saw their networking and saw the hardware and was like, that's some decent hardware. So I went ahead and checked out the service and it is absolutely mind blowing. So we got an awesome top down camera and we also too got ourselves a screen recorder right here. So what I'm going to do is whilst I'm talking about some other nonsense as we go into this, well, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a speed test. So now that we've loaded up the page, we can hit begin test and obviously begin that test. Now I'll let that go ahead and run in the background as we sort of talk about why this may be the future and how is this the future of Vel computing in general. So many new laptops on the market today are relatively powerful. Take this Ultimate Ultrabook for example, it is a relatively powerful system with the quad-core CPU, dedicated graphics, 32 gigabytes of RAM and much, much more including NVMe SSDs. And that gives you a very responsive, very powerful and extremely fast experience. However, what if I told you you could have the power of a desktop on a notebook with the battery life of the thinnest and lightest tablet on the market. Well, this is what virtualization will allow us to do. Now, for today's example of virtualization, as we can see here, the speed test has decided to finish up. My upload speed is, well, kind of bad, and my download speed is not the best, and my ping is also too not the best. So just keep in mind, this is the internet connection that we have here today. Not the world's greatest, but nevertheless, it is an internet connection right here. So if we minimize that, we jump back into another Chrome tab and we can see that we are on our virtualized system. But back to what exactly hardware is running this instance. So this actual virtualized PC is running in a large data center on the school campus or the university campus and it's running multiple systems with Intel Xeons, their 18 core versions, so their dual socket Xeon systems. They're also too running some sort of graphics acceleration units, I believe they're Quadros, though no one would really tell me what they were running as hardware. But nevertheless, I'm believing that they are Quadros and also also too, each system is looking to have upwards of a terabyte of RAM per system. These are custom blades made for this particular unit of streaming out services. Now the actual OS that is running on each unit is going to be Windows Server 2012 R2. However, they're using the Citrix suite of applications to go ahead and well virtualize these things out. So it's all basically based on third party software, but all bought together. Now, this is not exactly something that you could do in this configuration at home for a number of reasons. Number one is each server has at least a 10 gigabit connection to the outer internet. They actually host their own internet on site, so you kind of need extremely ball and internet. Number two is you need to either be a network engineer or at least qualified through Cisco or Citrix to even understand how to set this up. I'm still student and I'm still training and all those types of things, so I don't exactly understand everything. However, I did grasp a decent idea when they did explain it to me. So, you do have to have quite a bit of knowledge to actually set this sort of hardware up. But nevertheless, let's see what it can do and what it can offer us in today's world. So jumping down here, we can see we are on the desktop. Once again, I did want to reiterate, we are inside of a Chrome tab. If we unblur everything but the URL, we can see that we can jump over to different things. We can go into, I don't know, let's go into YouTube. We can see that we can scroll around in YouTube if my scrolling pad would work. We can see the CP Modder dashboard right there. We can even go back to the YouTube homepage and prove to you guys that we are just in a standard web browser. So there we go. So if we go ahead and jump back into the PC right here, we can see that, well, we are in the web page. So this is running through HTML5. HTML5 is relatively new at this point and before this we would have needed a plugin which means it would not have worked on everything. So any device that supports HTML5 including phone can virtualize a full desktop experience. So what we're going to do on this is go ahead and pull up Adobe After Effects. So if we 
do a search for Adobe After Effects right there. This is one of my favorite examples. So it does have a few glitches here and there. It's just connecting to the main server. So uh, it can actually open up After Effects as the way these units are designed is each person gets allocated five gigs of storage and then anything else you need to open on top of that gets pulled through the main system. So as we can see here, we're pulling this through the large, I believe it's one and a half petabyte uh, storage array that have hooked up to the high end uh, server cluster. So whilst that opens up, we can go ahead and just sort of uh, wait around for just a moment. But here is After Effects CC. I believe this is the 2015 R2 release. So it is at the time of recording the latest version of Adobe After Effects you can use on the market today. Once After Effects does go ahead and open up, we're going to open up a new composition and set it to 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. So there we go. We're going to hit OK and we're going to do a really quick and simple demonstration of the power that we have behind it. So we're going to go up and actually first create ourselves a new layer because, well, without a new layer, uh, we're going to actually have a problem there. So just new solid. There we go. We'll leave it as is. And we're going to go up to Effect and head down to Simulation. Once we go down to simulation we're going to go into the particle world simulation and hit play on that this is 4k full resolution playing back in faster than real time this is more than 30 uh, 39.92 fps and it is playing back butter smooth. Now obviously transferring over the internet it's not going to look as crisp but this system is outputting 4k files while simulating particle effects in real time. Now just to go ahead and throw something more at this system we're just going to duplicate that particle effect a few more times. It does start to chug a little bit but nevertheless we can see the green line is building up and we are having no problem here. Don't want to just do particle effects? No problem. Let's go ahead and open up a new solid and go ahead and hit OK in After Effects. And what we're going to do right here is go down and do another simulation. So if I can do this on the fly, I don't know, let's go ahead and do ourselves some uh, particle world. Or we'll, we'll just roll with this one. We'll move this one over a little bit so it has to render a lot more of the frame. We'll move this one over here. We'll duplicate some more and we'll hit play on that. Now, obviously, that is definitely slowing down because that is what is equivalent of however many layers we got going on here. So we'll just hit pause on that if it would uh, respond. It does get a little bit unresponsive, but if we just scroll down to the bottom right here, we have seven layers of 4K simulation playing back in real time. Just to give you an example, my 12 core desktop maxes out and anything more than about four layers of 4K simulation at one time. This is absolutely mind-blowing for productivity. Now, once we go ahead and we'll just quickly hit play on that, I also too want to prove that this is not taxing the Ultimate Ultrabook at all. So we'll pull up the Task Manager and we'll head over to Performance tab and we can see that all eight threads of this system is basically not being hit at all. All it's doing is decoding the H.264 signal that is being sent over the internet, and that is it. There is no problems right there. Once again, that is seven layers of 4K footage simulating itself in real time in Adobe After Effects with no hiccups, no lag, and no stuttering. Now, if you are like me out there and want to see the task manager of this system, unfortunately, it is not as ballin' as what you'd probably think. So this particular system is virtualizing off a blade that is running an Intel Xeon X5675. Now, this is an older CPU. I believe it is a six core, 12 threaded system um, that then goes ahead and virtualizes out this instance. Some of them are the 12 cores, some of the 18 cores, some of the, obviously, these older ones. Just depends what time you log in and what system you get. Now you may notice that, hang on a second, you just said this is a super powerful computer, but you've only got two cores and two threads and like eight gigabytes of RAM for the system. What is up with that? Well, actually in virtualization, this particular setup is gone ahead and defined the minimum specifications. So if every student at the university, which is about 80,000 people, were to hit the servers at the same time with Adobe After Effects with the same simulation, it will go down to a two core system with a maximum of eight gigabytes of RAM. Because it is approximately 5 p.m. at night and most people are just doing homework on their local machines, they're not gonna be hitting the servers 
at all. So we personally get all the power of the system just for me to use, which is absolutely awesome. I can't give an exact to total core count, but I'd say it's anywhere from probably 500 plus CPU cores that I have available at my disposal to hit play in Adobe After Effects. So at this point, it sounds absolutely awesome. Why on earth don't we just have super thin and light Chromebook type of devices and instance virtualize everything we need, have a super powerful computer at home? Why don't we do this? Number one, the main reason is complexity. This took at least 10 engineers to set up, design and implement as opposed to one person in your house that may know a thing about computers. There was networks that needed to be configuration, virtualized systems, and a whole lot of difficult and complex things that were needed to do. Number two, that internet connection. Not just any internet connection will be able to support this type of data transfer and data rates. So you do need that connection. And finally, the main reason why no one does it is because no one really knows about it. If you ask anyone about virtualization, they're gonna go, what? As opposed to asking someone, do you think we'll have a phone that is super powerful and more powerful than your desktop one day in the future? So virtualization does need to gain some ground in what we're doing, but I do believe virtualization and HTML5 is one of the best things to happen to computing since the invention of the computer because we can have super thin and light and basically not powerful devices act as if they were super Super thick, heavy, and almost desktop grade performance. So that's my sort of spin on it. And with that being said, that is all we have time here for today. Let me know down below what you think the future of computing is. Do you think it's like me with HTML5 and virtualization, or do you believe that we will have some sort of phone? portable device that is as powerful as a supercomputer is today. I'll be interested to see what you guys think and also to let me know down below if you'd like me to do sort of a ghetto home setup of your own virtualized computer so you could carry a Chromebook with you but have the same power of your super high end gaming desktop from home. Guys, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.